Today's uh, topic is, is why I believe. And uh, I thought that uh, that would be a good subject because of all the different things I've said uh, up here before, this would probably uh, bring it home to why I, I have this strong passion for the Word of God and, uh, and, and so on. Now, I'll try this little experiment. I heard this uh, statement said in different churches, and they would say, uh, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. All the time. Now, I, I like, I, it's kind of a fun thing to say, and it uh, gets the audience uh, interacting, but how do you know God is good? How do you know God is good? This is a question. Yeah, sister, you always there with a statement. So I'm just going to come down here because I want to interact with you guys a little bit. We know that he's good because of the work that he's done in our lives. I like that. I like that. Do you, you hear that? Yeah. What was that, sister? God is good every time to me. Yes. To everyone in here, God is a good God all the time. See, by having a relationship, right? It's when we have a relationship with God, we we learn about who He is. Give their life to Him. Thank you, sister. God. In order for us to say God is good and mean it when we have that response, we have to have a relationship with God. And uh, we saw the Pathfinder thing uh, earlier, right? And uh, the kids being baptized there, having a good time, a relationship. Uh, that's the primary place where you learn how to have a relationship with God is when you're young. Right? It's n not all of us, you know. It's, you know, it's it's a way that we we need to, you know, train up our kids, and then uh, and then if you give them the right training in the beginning, that that's the direction that they're going to go. That that's going to stick with them, even if there's a time in between that it doesn't seem like uh, all of that uh, went anywhere. And I'm only talking about personal experience because uh, I had a really good mother. She struggled as a single mom, went to a, a new country, not knowing the language, but her faith in God brought her through many adversities. And... Uh, and each adversity had a deliverance that, if no other, it was a miracle from God. I know of one uh, that uh, we were living a somewhat at a uncomfortable uh, living at a, uh, a nursing home. And we needed a new place to live because, uh, you know, it was only meant for a single mother to, or single person to live there. It wasn't for a mother and a child. And we needed a home, and my mom prayed for a home, and we needed some place to live. And God amazingly provided a home where she needed to care for this elderly man. But see, when God provides something for you, he has an ulterior motive because he needed her to be there, to be an influence on this man, which brought this man to believe in Jesus. He was baptized. So God helping ended up being a blessing to the person that provided a home for her, ultimately provided the greatest home ever is in the kingdom. Oh, <laughs> you want to say something? Well, when we think about the joy of yeah, our so life, so everybody can benefit. 
when we think about the story of Elisha, when he went to that old lady's house where she had a small child, she didn't even ask for a child, but God blessed her with a son. And then, you know, she, she wasn't sure. And so she gave birth, the child grows up and everything. And one day the child falls sick and dies. So she's like, oh no, I didn't even ask for this. And God gave her this blessing. So she went to Elijah and was like, no, you need to come and wake this child up because I didn't even ask for him. And he came and the child rose up again. Like Elijah just being there, that relationship that was formed because God put him there. Same with the, same with your family and everything. Put that belief and that love in her heart for God that probably wouldn't have been there without that experience. Thank you. That's very true because God doesn't do things without benefiting a bigger picture because you see, to God, every one of you is, is his children. You, no one by a geographic placement uh, hair color, skin color, eye color, does, doesn't, it's everyone is a child of God. And everyone is extremely important to God. And growing up, when I was a young lad, my mom would tell me different uh, fairy tales, but among that, she would also tell me stories from the Bible. And I remember the story of Joseph, about Moses. And it, these were things that I, you know, built up my uh, understanding of, of the stories of the Bible. And, uh, and also from my grandmother, the stories of uh, them surviving during World War II. And the miraculous experiences. I mean, I could tell you some stories and you would say, that's unbelievable, but... You know, these things happen to them because when adversity comes, God comes with uh, the appropriate amount of uh, miracles to meet the adversities you're faced with. And just growing up, seeing the kids at the camp, you know, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Because I went to uh, summer camps. My mom sent me to that. And I remember this one summer camp. We had uh, the camp leader was a missionary. He was a missionary in Africa. And his, his son was with him on a missionary group. And he was, they were really good, uh, faithful, God-fearing people. And it taught us about the power of prayer. And we were working on the different events that we had at camp, and one of them was uh, canoeing. And so at the end of the camp, uh, all the different departments of the camp would demonstrate their skills and things that they learned that week as they were at camp, and we were to demonstrate our canoeing skills. But the weather wasn't cooperating with us. It was windy and just kind of stormy and windy and the waves on the lake and uh, Whatever we try to do on the canoes, it just, it just did not work because it, the weather just was not working with us. And he brought us all together. We knelt on a dock there, and we prayed that God would give us nice weather so that we can perform and do you know, what we needed to do. Now, after we prayed, absolutely nothing changed. It was still windy and, and stormy and it just, you know, nothing happened. But we carried on. Everybody came down, sat at the shore front and got ready to watch us all do our demonstration. And as we we're getting ready and we stepped onto the canoes to do the different things we were going to do, the wind stopped. I mean, it was like you turned off a switch. It was windy, and it no longer windy. All of a sudden, the sun came out a little bit, and the water turned calm, and we performed for like 30 minutes doing the different canoe demonstrations and all the different things that you know, we did to, uh, for the performance for the rest of the uh, campers. 
And then we pull the canoes onto the dock. And the moment we pull the canoes on the dock, it's like you turn the switch back on. The storm came right back, and the clouds and the wind and the water got choppy. So, one experience after another. These little things that build up in your life, and you realize, you know, God is real. He listens to you when you talk to him. He, he's not a genie where you rub it and says, I wish I had a Mercedes Benz. I'll take my church friends to church if I had a Mercedes Benz. Oh, that's, that's not really the kind of uh, God he is. But he listens to you. He provides for you. He gives you a home, but he asks that you share with people. He doesn't want you to take a blessing and keep it for yourself. He doesn't want you to bury it. He wants you to share it with others. He wants you to experience God through sharing. Yes, sister. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Yeah. Yes. Our prayers are. You know, we don't understand travel and distance right we we see like oh god's in heaven and we're here we pray and it's going to take time for the god to answer that prayer right because you know the great distance between heaven and earth but the reality is when we pray god's already heard it and he's already in process of answering it you know, we, we don't understand how God does that, except that he gives us examples. He says, you know, you are parents, and you do good things for your kids. You feed them food. You don't give them rocks or snakes, you know, instead of food. You put clothes on their back. You do those things for your kids, and while yet we're evil, God is perfect. And how much more would a perfect father in heaven do for his children? There's so many different experiences in my life that uh, each one being like stepping stones, building up my faith, that realizing how real God is. And... You know, sometimes God is revealed not just in wonderful things that happen, like when we prayed for my mom to get better, and here she is, breathing well. She can t say a full sentence without coughing, and that's a blessing, because I love this woman who brought me into this world, who loved me and took care of me, sacrificed herself, and her needs so that I would have things. But our Father in heaven, who gave everything for us. And like I said, blessings don't always come when in like getting things. Because I remember my late wife, she finally realized she was coming to the Adventist message to, and I should say to the biblical understanding of who God is, that he's a God of love, that salvation comes freely, that it's not earned or, you, or paid for through, uh, through offerings and, uh, and, uh, and acts uh, to a church, but through a loving gift from God. And as she came to the knowledge and was baptized, you know, I remember 
And I, I, it's, I'd be too long if I told you all the stories, maybe some other time, but we, I've already suffered one tragedy, and we're coming back uh, home. And as we're traveling home, we're saying, well, we still have each other. We, we have God and each other. And Satan, and I blame him for all the tragedies in the world because God causes nothing but only allows it. Because if you read Job, Job clearly dis describes that dichotomy here. That God is, only wants good for his people, but Satan is constantly accusing and showing off that he has control of the world, that he controls this or manipulates that because he came before God and says, I rule the world. That's what it means when he says he's walking back and forth. You know, that's that ter Old Testament term when you, that you are ownership of your property. And, uh, and God said to him, look, I still have a servant out there that serves me. So when you have tragedies that happen in your life, remember that these tragedies are caused by the enemy. And the victories when we proclaim God, despite of the tragedies, we proclaim the beautiful character of God. For Job proclaimed the beautiful character of God because even though you slay me, I will believe in you, was his, uh, was his statement of faith. Yes, I'm going to that. I just kind of building up to it. And, and it's also a difficult subject for me. But... As we're heading back home, continue with the story, we're traveling there, already had one tragedy that we were dealing with, and I was saying to my wife there, my late wife, we still have each other and we have God, and we came around this corner, and a vehicle came the other direction and hit us head on. It was sudden, quick, and now Satan took away what I thought was someone so important in my life, and now I was left alone. Everyone else in the accident died, and I was the only survivor. But it didn't mean that uh, God left me. And I had faith that God was always going to be with me. And those words that we have God and each other, and the fact that she loved God, I know that this is just a temporary situation. Because we have this great hope, right? The resurrection, when everything will be restored in our lives. You know, it's described in different places that it's like birth pains. While I can't, you know, say that, that I understand that exactly, but I've seen this happen. It's something that's painful, unpleasant, something you don't want to experience. But afterwards, when the child is born and you see this beautiful baby and you hold it in your heart and you see this miracle of life, it all seems to fade away, right? And you see this new cr creation that came out of love that's in your arms and that's joy and all that pain and misery that was before kind of evaporates. And same thing 
that at the end, when God will return, all these things will be restored. It says that angels will come and bring those who you lost in your life and restore them in your arms. That we all be caught up together and we'll have a life with God. So, when we experience life here and we pray about the different things that bother us, ultimately, our goal should be that we be brought closer to God because as long as we are close to God, as long as we have a relationship with God and know that he's a loving father who loves us, he can't wait to embrace us. You know, thinking about resurrection, the second coming, I know we all talk about it. We see the signs in the, in the times. We see how the world dynamics is changing so much. But God is longing for that same reunite with his children when he can embrace them in his arm. And that's every one of you. He's longing to hug you and hold you in his arms, to kiss you on the cheek, put that cloak of righteousness on your back, put that ring of belonging on your hand. Because you are so precious to him. Every one of you. Every one of you was worth the cross. Every one of you was worth the ridicule, the, the beatings, the spitting upon. You know, the biggest thing that hurt Christ, not the beating, not the cross, but the thing that those who hate him, despise him, those who mocked him and wanted nothing to do with him. I mean, as parents, what do you do when your child hates you and doesn't want to do nothing with you? He turns his back on you. That's, that's, that hurt, right? And God, who has so many children that hate him, don't want nothing to do with him, that kind of pain that breaks a person's heart. For God so loved the world. Not Jesus alone. For God, the Father. We know that when Jesus walked on this earth and in his character, he demonstrated this loving, compassionate person says, if you've seen me here, you've seen the Father, because we're, this, we're one, meaning that we have the same goal, we have the same love for you, we have the same compassion. We want you to be saved. So, parents, bring up your children Show them the love of God by being loving to your kids. Show them your faithfulness. Put your trust in a heavenly father who loves you, who cares for you. That a thought of being without you is such heart-wrenching torture to him, and that's what broke his heart on a cross. Our duty, our mission statement, is to spread the love of God. Right? Not theology, but the love of God. Yes, sister? Revelation 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. That's right. 
One day, our tears will be wiped away by the Savior. One day, we'll be reunited with our loved ones. One day, we will have brand new body and vigor and vitality. One day, we'll have joy and happiness and the greatest adventure that you could ever think of because not only will we get to live on this planet, but we get to explore the entire galaxy and talk to the creator on how it was all made and spend an eternity learning about our Savior, our God, and our Father. Amen. Dear Holy Father, we thank you so much for your love and blessings. We thank you so much that you love us so much. We ask that your Holy Spirit touch our hearts and open our minds to your beauty, to your wisdom, that we can be compassionate and loving people, that we can put our selfishness and hatred aside and embrace your loving a compassionate nature, that we can see not people of color, but people of God, not just strangers, but brothers and sisters, for we were born of Adam and reborn by the blood of Christ. So we are truly brothers and sisters when we believe in the great God of the universe that we can show our love and compassion to others. We can put aside our bickering and, and trivial talk and concentrate on how to be close to you, how to have an eternal salvation, eternal kingdom, and a closeness with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, if you want adventurers in this church, well, let's talk to the uh, Pathfinder Club. See who has kids that wants to be adventurers. Let's get the ball going, because without knowing, we can't have something. All right, I guess we have the closing music now.